We did that. Okay. Uh, good morning. Good morning, everybody. Uh, let's have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, Lord, be with us today. Um, beautiful Sabbath morning. Uh, please keep the weather like this and uh, do not let us have 120 degrees. Amen. So I'm going to tell you guys a quick story. When I was growing up, I had this, um, I had some friends in my neighborhood. We were all really cool with each other. But there was this one kid that I had never met. And um, I, I'm just going to make up a random name. Let's just say his name was Isaac, all right? And uh, he was kind of a strange kid. But I had never really met him, so I never knew that personally. And Isaac was told, I was told by my friends, my close friends, right, that Isaac was weird, he was kind of a bully, he was kind of strange, like, don't really hang out with him, don't talk with him, like, he's not a good friend, right? And my perspective and my thought is, oh, well, my friends must have experienced something with him, so let's not hang out with him. So one day, we're, we're walking up the sidewalk, right, we're walking up the sidewalk, and the three of us, and we see this kid come out of his house, right? And he's playing in his front yard, doing whatever. And again, I've never met this person in my life before. I've never talked to them. I've never seen them before. So I see this kid, and from a distance, I'm like, I mean, maybe he could be weird. I don't know. Who am I to judge, right? So we're walking. The kid looks at the three of us, right? And my two friends, they make eye contact with him. And they turn around and walk away. And I just see the kid in the distance, like, like he just, I could feel his heart just heavy. And I was like, man, I, come on, man, I got to talk to him now, you know? So I, they're walking back, and then I walk forward, right? And this kid sees me come at him, and he's like, like, huh? Like, what's going on, right? So he continues to do his thing, and I can tell he's sad. And then my friends are like, okay, what are you doing? Right, walk into this kid, this nobody that we told you not to talk to. So I walk up to this kid, and I'm like, I, I act like I don't know who he is. I like I act like I've never met him, and I say, Hey, what's your name, man? He said, My name's Isaac. Right, and I was I was like, How you doing? How was your day? He didn't say anything back to me. And I was like, okay, maybe this kid is kind of weird because I did ask him a question and he's not saying anything back, right? But then, then he gives me a hug. I, I don't know who this guy is. He just gives me a hug. And now I'm really like, okay, this guy definitely is a little strange. And then he backs up and he's crying. And he says to me, you're the first person to ask me that besides my family. This sermon isn't about um, perspective of knowing what other people are going through, but it is important to know that other people are going through anything, through many things, and it's important to understand that. That's not what this is about, no. There's a story in the Bible, this, this, this guy named Matthew, right? And, and the disciples and, and the people said Matthew was what? What was, what was he? Well, he was a, right, he was a tax collector, right? No one liked him. Nobody liked him. He was a bully. He was a scammer, right? He was, he was a guy that no one wanted to be around because he was a friend that wasn't a friend, if that makes sense, right? And again, Jesus is walking with his disciples and he's walking towards the tax collector booth. And Matthew heard of this guy named Jesus, but Matthew was like, man, this Jesus guy would never know who I am. He's probably going to make fun of me just like the rest of the people. And Jesus... He's walking with his disciples, and his disciples says, hey, let's go this way, because Matthew's up there. We can't hang out with him. The disciples turn around, but Jesus walks forward. And Jesus goes to this booth, right? And he knocks on the door. He doesn't say anything except, follow me. Matthew stood there in silence. Because Jesus was the first person to say something nice to him. Jesus did not say, you tax collector, you betrayer, you traitor, you person that doesn't matter. You're just like the Romans. No, no, no. Jesus didn't say that. Jesus said, follow. 
And those two words to Matthew meant the world to him. It meant so much to him that he, he dropped everything. He was making bucks. He dropped it all. He said, no, I'm following this guy because he's got something special for me. He ended up, he ended up writing a book of the Bible that's quoted so much every single Saturday. I have a question, and I want you to think about it. I, I, I mean, th think about it, really. It's going to sound a little confusing. It might not. Who is the God that you know? Who is the God that you know? The God that we come every Saturday to worship, right? That we sing songs about. Who's the God that you know? Who's this God that you worship about every single week? That the God that you read about in this Bible right here. Who is the God that you know? Because that God that you worship, that determines your relationship with Him. I have a volunteer I need to come up. Jeffrey, would you come up here real quick? By the way, good job singing. They did a great job singing. That was really nice, yeah. All right, this is, this is my homie right here, all right? We're my tall brother right here, my giant right here. And we, we've been good friends for a while, right? Yeah, for a good four years, five years, right? So, all right, we're going to do a trust fall, okay? Do you trust that I'll catch you? Okay. Come on. All right, I got you. Okay, why did you trust that I'd catch you? Well, I mean, I know you're my friend. Right? Okay, now we're going to do something cool real quick, all right? We're going to stand here, all right? And I want you to know your guardian angel is right behind you. All right, let's do a trust fall real quick, okay? God's right behind you. He'll catch you, okay? Right? Come on, let's go. Let's do it together. We're friends. We're homies all the way till the end, right? Let's go. Let's go. Come on. Yeah. Let me sit down. Thank you. Right. So, um, thank you, Jeffrey. Yeah. So, the thing is, right, with the trust fall, simple as that, right? Jeffrey and I are good friends. So if I fell into him, he fell into me, I know he'll catch me because I know him, right? I've gotten to know him. I spend every single day with him. I play basketball with him. I play volleyball with him. All of my time I spend with Jeffrey, right? But what about God? I know Jeffrey spends time, a lot of time with God. If you want to talk with someone about Jesus, talk with Jeffrey. I'm telling you, he... But my, my thing is, right, if you look at the bulletin, it's called deceptive doubt. That's the title of the sermon, right? Why do we doubt God? Why is it so easy to doubt God? Right? And I think the reason we doubt God is because we don't know him, right? Right? If, if Jeffrey didn't know me, he wouldn't have fallen back. He wouldn't have let me catch him, right? Because he doesn't know who I am. So I have a question for you guys, right? If, if, if you met a random stranger, like a 12-year-old, would you let him drive your car? Yes or no? Why? This random person, wh why won't you let them drive your car? Right? Because you don't know them. You've never met this person in your life. You don't know them. You don't trust them, right? But let's just say it's your best friend, right? The friend that you've spent every day with, that you've gotten to know, that you trust with your life, that you have faith in. Would you trust him to drive your car? Right? It's a little easier that way. you guys have your Bibles, uh, turn to the book of Hebrews, please. Okay, I don't know why I had, didn't have a bookmark. Oh, there it is. All right, All right we're going to go to Hebrews chapter 12. Hebrews chapter 12. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders the sin that so easily entangles, And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. The joy set before him, he endured the cross, scorning its shame, and sat at the right hand of the throne of God. Consider him 
who endured such opposition from sinners, so that you will not grow weary and lose heart. We need faith to overcome doubt. Before I get to that, I want to... The reason we doubt. The reason you doubt sometimes is because we're deceived. We're told one thing, but we see another. What do you believe? Right? The devil is so good at deceiving. Man, he is good at it. And the devil knows who God is. And he doesn't want you to know who he is. Because he, know, he, he knows if you know who God is, man, you will give up the world that quick. He doesn't want that. The devil wants you to rot. But Jesus wants you to prosper. Jesus is the perfecter of Faith, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of faith. Fixing our eyes on who? Fixing our eyes on who? But God, I lost my job. God, my family member died. I'm losing money. I'm losing friends. I have to move to a different state. The perfecter of faith. Fixing our eyes on Jesus. But it's not fair. It didn't end the way I wanted it to. Fix your eyes on Jesus. The pioneer and perfecter. I've shared this story a few times with a couple of people. And I'm going to share it with you guys today. A few months ago, I was in a time in my life where I really didn't know who God was. And I doubted him. And it was hard to get through school. It was hard to go to church. It was hard to do anything. I practically didn't care about anything. And I remember one day, I, I drove to the top of Scottsdale Quarters, top of the parking, and I just wanted to get my head clear because it was quiet up there. And I got out of my car, and I'm um, looking, laying on, the, like, lying, laying on the edge of the parking lot, and I'm looking down. And that ground is starting to look a little friendly. And I hear these voices telling me to jump. Saying, your life's not worth it, man. God could never love you, man. I heard those voices and I got right in my car. And I drove home. Oh, sorry. So I get home, and I take a shower, because I'm thinking, no, 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 it's just my head. I'm overthinking too much. I get in the shower, and I think to myself, well, might as well pray, right? Because that always works. I start praying, I'm on my knees in the shower, and I'm asking God, and I say, hey, where are you at? Nothing. I got nothing, nothing in response. But what I got was this cloud of evil darkness coming over me. And I just started weeping. I started weeping. And I didn't know what to do. Fixing our eyes on Jesus, right? And 100% I was doubting God in that moment. And I felt, again, this just evil come over me. Saying, you're not worth it. God doesn't love you. But I was so sick of it. that in the shower I screamed, God, I choose you. And then, boom. That evil went away so quick. And I kid you not, I'm on my knees with my hands out. And I feel these gentle hands holding my hands. And I started crying in the shower. And I'm, Praising God, saying thank you for saving me. I was given a false view of who God was. And it drove me insane to the point of death. But when Jesus... And 
Jesus is so good. He's so good. He's so good. And he loves us so much. He loves us so much that he, he went through and, and died the most horrific way that any human being could imagine. But on holding that 300 pound cross going up that hill, his, his mind wasn't focused on, I'm sick and tired of this. I'm sick and tired. No, 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 no. He was thinking of all of you, Pastor Lexi. He was thinking of you when he was holding that cross. Lana, he was thinking of you. Mr. Murata, he was thinking of you. Mom, he was thinking of you. He was thinking of all of you holding that cross. He was so focused on his love for us. And that's my final thought that I just wanted to tell you guys. Is that although we doubt God, he still loves us. Although we lose our faith sometimes, he still loves us. No matter what happens, he will always, always be right there. Always be right there. Reaching down, picking Peter up. Come on. Try again. Try again. You got this. He's not a hateful God. He's not a selfish God. He is a loving God. And once you accept that and you know that, you'll find that doubting God will be a lot harder and easier. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, it is so easy to fall short when we're surrounded by sin. But Lord, perfect love casts out all fear. And you are the perfect love. Nothing on this world can fill our hearts except you. Sure, we may try, but eventually we'll need to replace them. But Lord, we just need you to completely satisfy us. And on the day that you return, we will no longer suffer, nor doubt, nor have a lack of faith, Lord, because you're going to be with us every step of the way as you are now. Guide and protect us in all our ways, Lord. Amen.